Hello, I'm Lisa McMahon, author of The Wake Trilogy and the new book Priors Cross, which is about a small town in Montana where children start disappearing. Teenagers in a very tiny high school disappear and the whole town's in an uproar. And our main character, Kendall, uh, has OCD and it's throwing everything out of proportion for her. So um, it's a thriller, there's a love story, of course. I hope teens um, find my books entertaining and that is my main goal. When I was signing in New York a couple years ago and one of my fans came up to the table and she was shaking a little bit and then she started crying and she was so happy to meet me and that was so touching. It's, it's amazing to be able to mean something to somebody like that and that was really cool. Get inspired by a lot of different things. By conversations I overhear in coffee shops. I get inspired by uh, other people's books and movies. I get inspired by uh, news stories weird news stories, things that feel so strange that they could never happen, or really scary, creepy stuff. Um, it gives me ideas for, for new books and stuff like that. My next book is called The Unwanted, and it is the first in a series. It's a middle grade series, and it comes out August 30, 2011, this year. There was a hint of wind coming over the top of the stone walls and through the barbed wire sky on the day Alexander Stowe was to be purged. Alex waited in the dusty commons of Quill and felt the light breeze cooling the sweat on his upper lip. His twin brother Aaron stood beside him, their parents behind, and all around the entire community of Quill watched and waited the bland looks of sleeping fish on their faces. Mr. Stowe pressed his finger hard into Alex's back. A final poke in the kidneys, a last goodbye, Alex thought, or a warning not to run. Alex glanced at Aaron, whose face showed the tiniest emotion. Scared, was it, or sad? Alex didn't know. The high priest Justine, her long white hair undisturbed despite the breeze, rose to her full height and observed the silent crowd. She began without introduction or ado, for a purge was neither exciting nor boring, it just was, as many things just were in Quill. There were nearly 50 13-year-olds this year. The people of Quill waited to hear which of these teenagers had been marked as wanted or necessary, and by process of elimination, which of them remained to be purged. Alex scanned the group and their families around the giant half-circle of the amphitheater. He knew some of them, not all. Alex's mind wandered as the High Priest Justine announced first the names of the Wanteds, and he startled only slightly as the High Priest spoke Aaron's name. Aaron, who'd had nothing to worry about, sighed anyway in relief when he was among the fifteen names called. The necessaries were next. Thirteen names were read. Alexander Stowe was not one of those either. Even though Alex knew that he was unwanted, and had known ever since his parents had told him over breakfast when he was ten, the knowledge and three years of preparation weren't enough to stop the sweat that pricked his armpits now. It was down to a mere formality, unless there was a surprise, which there sometimes was, but it didn't matter. Everyone stood motionless until the final twenty names were called. Among the unwanted, Alexander Stone. Alex didn't move, though his heart fell like a cement block into his gut. He stared straight ahead as he'd seen the other unwanteds do in past years. His lip quivered for a moment, but he fought to still it. When the governors came over to him, he put his arms out for them to shackle with rusty iron bands. He made his eyes icy cool before he glanced over his shoulder at his parents, who remained unemotional. His father nodded slightly and finally took his finger out of Alex's back after the shackles were secure. That was a minor relief, but what did it matter now? Aaron sniffed once quietly, catching Alex's attention in the silent amphitheater. The identical boys held a glance for a moment. Something like a jolt of energy passed between them, and then it was gone. Goodbye, Aaron whispered. Alex swallowed hard, held the stare a second more as the governors tugged at him to follow. 
and then broke the connection and went with the governors to the waiting bus that would take him to his death.